100 bucks. It's been four years and I'm still very proud of that vine. I feel like we talk, but we don't really talk. Like, it's just me giving you information. So I figured that I'd make this more for conversation by giving you a life update while, you know, I eat watermelon. But I won't do it on camera because that's just a little disrespectful. So first things first, I don't think I'm going to college this year. That's a bummer. The second thing, this happened. Wait, I'm going to flash back to me doing some pose. All the hair that was here, that, all of this is gone. My dad cut it for me. It was an interesting experience. What do you guys think? It's not that bad, is it? Mm. Drop a comment down below if you feel that my dad could become a barber someday. The third life update is this channel. We've managed to reach 7.8k subscribers while I'm filming this, which is insane. I never thought I'd be able to do something like this. Hopefully we can hit 10k soon and we'll have a mini, you know, celebration. Thank you for tuning into my life update with watermelons. Now I'm going to um, give you some advice. Not advice. I'm not someone who can give advice. I'm not qualified to give advice. I'm going to give you information and facts and opinion. Advice, yeah. And it's all over much too quickly. Welcome back. This is not working. This entire video is all going to be about financial aid and whether it's possible to study abroad if you don't have the requisite finances to pay for an entire education. And it is a lot. To give you context before starting this video, I personally did not apply for financial aid and I'm aware that makes me a minority of international applicants because not too many people share the same privilege. But the reason I'm making this video is to ensure that for all of those people who don't have the same circumstances as me, I can do the research, I can talk to students who've gotten in with financial aid in a need blind need aware school and I can give you the correct information so that when you apply to college you know that it is possible for you to get in whether you're applying for financial aid or not. With that being said let's begin. The first part of this video is going to be busting a few myths because a lot of people feel if you're studying in a private university in the United States of America, if you're studying in an Ivy League school, everybody over there is rich, everybody over there is privileged and that is simply not true. If you look at the financial aid database for the Ivy Leagues as well as Stanford, you're going to realize that somewhere between 40 to 60% of all undergraduates on these campuses are on some sort of financial aid. This basically means that they're not all just for individuals who are wealthy and can afford these universities. There is assistance provided to individuals who just cannot pay. Now, if you're applying to the United States, you need to know that there are two kinds of universities. Number one is a need blind school and the other is a need aware school. Need blind schools basically means that if you're applying to a university, regardless of your financial circumstances, regardless of how much money you're asking for, it is not going to affect your admissions process. In the United States, there are currently five universities that are need blind. You have Harvard University, Princeton University, Yale University, Amherst College, and the last one is MIT. The other category is need aware, which basically means that if you're applying to this university, your financial circumstances and whether or whether or not you're asking for financial aid will play a significant role in your admissions process. This definitely means that if you're asking for financial aid, it makes the process harder for you to get in. That brings me to an important question. Should you apply for financial aid? If you look at Stanford in specific, you're going to notice that close to 60% of undergraduates at Stanford are receiving financial support. But let's examine that a little further just for international students. In the year 2018 to 19, according to the US News, 240 undergraduate students at Stanford were receiving financial aid. To put that into perspective, there are currently 649 students at Stanford who are international students. That means 37% of international students at Stanford are receiving financial aid. Which brings me to an important myth buster. It is possible to study at Stanford if you don't have the requisite financial resources because universities like Stanford are trying to make their education as accessible as they can for you. There are two kinds of aid that a university will give you. The first is need-based aid and the other is a merit-based aid or a scholarship. Now, most universities have a need-based package, which means if you fill the requisite forms, you've applied for financial aid, the university will take that into account and give you a financial aid package. On the other hand, you have 
merit-based aid or scholarships, which basically means that regardless of your financial background, if you're a talented enough candidate, that university will give you a partial or a full scholarship to come and study over there. Just to give you a few names, you have Carlton College, which gives a full merit-based scholarships to six international students every year. Now the next is USC, and they have a merit-based scholarship, which is partial or full, which they give to all students who are applying. The only thing that you have to do to qualify for the USC's merit-based scholarship is apply by the priority deadline, which is December 1st. So instead of applying by December 30th, if you apply by December 1st, you automatically qualify for the scholarship. And it's a really, really great way to try and earn some money to support yourself at college. The third university is Duke University, which offers a lot of merit-based scholarships for students. And you're automatically considered for these merit-based scholarships just by applying. I am going to be interviewing a student who did receive a full ride to Duke, which means he had all expenses paid and is a Duke Kushnan scholar later as well. Now, if you're an international student, you would want to know which universities in the United States gives the most financial aid. And I'm going to be putting up a list over here. This is from US News and it shows two things. Number one is going to be showing you the number of students this university gave financial aid to. And the second thing is it's going to be talking about the average amount of financial aid that was offered by the university. In the first position, we have Columbia University. They gave 254 international students financial aid and the average financial aid package they gave was $68,000. Just to point out a few trends from the universities that are giving extremely good financial aid packages. Number one, a lot of liberal arts colleges are on this list like Pomona College, like Williams College, like Amherst. Another thing you're going to notice if you look at a larger list of about the top 50 universities is that a lot of the Ivy League, MIT, Stanford, a lot of the top tier universities in the United States have extremely generous financial aid packages. And that's simply because they have substantially higher financial aid resources than the average college. Now, taking a few examples of the universities I was looking at, like Harvard or Stanford, a lot of these universities have tuition rates which is about 50 to 70 thousand dollars, which comes around 37 lakhs to 52 lakhs per year, which amounts to a huge expense. So, your next point needs to be analyzing whether your university has the right financial aid program for you. For example, at Stanford, if your family earns below $65,000 per year, Stanford will completely cover all costs you have to pay regarding tuition when you get accepted. Now, it is to be noted that with Stanford, international students come under the need aware bracket, which means that if they accept you, they're accepting you after taking into account that you're asking for money. Harvard, on the other hand, has a similar policy where they will meet full demonstrated need, which means that they will meet all of the amount of money that you are unable to pay. And that's why it's extremely important to study the financial aid programs of each of these universities to understand whether you will qualify for their financial aid requirements as well. The last question a lot of students bear in mind is the fact that financial aid is extremely, extremely competitive. And in a lot of cases, students do get rejected solely because of the fact that they're having to ask for a lot of money from these universities. In my opinion, I still suggest you do apply for financial aid if you need it, because in the instance that you do not ask for financial aid and you still get accepted into your dream university, saying no to them just because you cannot pay is extremely, extremely sad. And in almost all cases, universities will refuse to offer any financial aid to you if you've not asked for it in the beginning, but then later on come around and say, hey, I can't come to this university because I don't have the money. Would you be willing to give me a financial aid package? You have to be indicating to them well in advance that you need financial support from them. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I never applied for financial aid. But that doesn't mean that I won't be able to share with you the perspective of students who have applied for financial aid. So now I'm going to be going into three interviews I had with students who have gotten 100% scholarships from three different universities in different categories. I finished filming that around 4 a.m. and I don't have an outro recorded, which probably means I ended up sleeping. So for the 30% gang, Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed. Also, a small request. I get a lot of DMs and a lot of mails. I see them, I'm reading them, but I can't reply to all of them. So please bear with me. I'll get to them slow and steadily. I noticed that a few of my subscribers actually do end up helping a few of the queries in the comment section. I love seeing that. Please keep helping each other. And thanks for watching. Honey. Honey. Honey.
Hey.